The first turns a game of Polytopia are of utmost importance and a good star can and will snowball into the rest of the game. So what are the best openings for each and every tribe? What do you do with a lighthouse? What do you do if you get unlucky and don't find a village? How do you find villages? And what are the general plans for the first turns of the game? This is what will be explained today in this video. If you learned something from this video, make sure to like and subscribe as it really helps me out. So without further ado, let's get right into each and every opening in the game. Let's go. Alright, so first up is Xingxi. Well, Xingxi is interesting and they start with climbing, of course. So what you probably want to do is um, look for any good resources that you have and how you're going to level up your first couple of cities, right? And the first thing you're going to do is take a look. Our capital here doesn't have any great upgrades uh, potentials. There's like one fruit, there's a hunt, there's an animal over here. But we see that there's a bunch of mines. So in this case, we want to move our warrior onto a place that it can see enough uh, different resources. So if there's a good uh, chance to upgrade your cities with uh, either fruits or animals, or in this case it is mining, you will move towards that resource because here is a mine. So let's move over there and you train another warrior. Now this is not the greatest uh, of tribes and mining is definitely not the greatest start so you really want to see whether or not you can upgrade your cities in a different matter because this is incredibly slow but this will be the first couple of turns you are going to focus on seeing what you can use what you can get and how to most efficiently level up your cities and make use of climbing so that you can get all of that vision. Time for Imperius. Imperius is one of the strongest tribes in the game and we got lucky here with a lighthouse spawn. If you don't get a lighthouse on your spawn, you want to move your warrior towards a fruit, preferably towards the center of the map. And then you want to upgrade your city, take a workshop on turn zero, and in this case, we do get a lighthouse so we can terrain another warrior. Then for your second turn, you want to move towards the resource that you found. And that is the, going to be the most likely to be able to upgrade. And then in this case, we don't see a great other indicator. But let's just move towards the center of the map. That is how your first couple of turns will look with Imperius. Nothing too special. And this is going to be a repeating pattern for turn zero tribes. Is that you just upgrade your city. And then train another warrior on turn one. Now it's time for Bardor. Bardor used to be one of the greatest tribes in the game. But now it is reduced to eh, a decent tribe. So in this case let's look at the spawn. We spawned again with a lighthouse and what we see here is that there are no good uh, indicators for a village that we can level up. So what we are going to do is move towards the fruits because, well, depending on your spawn, you want to still upgrade your cities and moving towards a forest doesn't guarantee that there is a village over here. And because we have a lighthouse of course we can train a second warrior on turn zero then for turn one we're going to move towards the village that we found 
and in this case we see a ruin and you can gamble either to move towards the ruin or try to find a village over here that is going to be the first couple of turns and this is the opener for Bardor now Umarji Umarji is very interesting and they can be the hardest opening for me um, what I usually do is when I play them and I do only play them rarely is try to find some fruits and in this case there's three fruits over here and we are going to move towards that and if you want to you can either train another uh, rider or train another warrior and in this case it is probably best to train a warrior because we can get organization pre-capture on turn one as you will see move on to that over here and we see some fruit over here as well as over here so there is probably a village over here or something we're going to move towards that alternatively you could also train another rider if you don't have good resource indicators because you are going to need to search for a village still another opener you can do with Umaji is if you spawn with a lighthouse you can uh, research organization on turn zero move your rider and then upgrade your city on turn one which is decent Kiku is a great tribe and they usually benefit from fish and the other nearby resources so what you're going to do with Kiku is on turn zero upgrade your cap and then you're going to s observe the resources and in this case we can see there's two fruits and a fish over here so we want to move towards those resources and then here we go we see another village and we train another warrior and that's basically it so if you don't find fish it's usually best to go for uh, the fruits and here's why fruits and organization can lead to strategy since you're playing Kiku you're most likely to be playing on a map with some water so if you need it strategy can be researched next okay Hudrik Hudrik is a terrible tribe and you should definitely not play them if you decide to play them nonetheless you can look at them as a Umarji uh, kind of tribe and what you can do is either go uh, and train another warrior but in this case we have the lighthouse and what you can do then is just move your uh, archer towards a resource that you could probably harvest end the turn go towards that resource get hunting in this case because uh, animals have a very high chance to spawn and then upgrade your city take a workshop this might be a little bit slow but at least it's going to get your economy going and that's the one thing that you need with Hudrik, is to just get going. Luxidor, what can I say about you? You are a terrible tribe, in my opinion. But at least you can do some stuff when the other tribes can't. What you usually end up doing is just train another warrior on turn zero. And in this case, we have no way of upgrading our city. So that's kind of terrible. So, yep, we just move towards a tile that looks promising to us. And we are going to try and find a way to upgrade one of the cities. Vengir! Don't play Vengir! Except if you can play an opening like this. 
and train another swordsman and just slap around any opposing tribe. Alternatively, if you just picked a random tribe or just got absolutely destroyed with a random tribe, just train another warrior. Pass the turn. Try to find a village. And regret your life choices. Sabasi is one of my favorite tribes and their opening is also very cool. So look at this. We can see that there's a whole bunch of farmlands over here. And we're going to make maximum use out of them. So we see that there is a farmland over here as well as over here. What we are going to do is just upgrade our city. Take a workshop on turn zero. Then move towards that village over here that we see. And train another warrior. That's so simple. It, it's so simple. Sabasi is the easiest tribe to get to play. And what you want to do next is up to you. You can go either ride a road or you can go sailing. Whatever you want. Uh, might even go with uh, construction if you like that. And that's just up to you. Now take a look at Imo. Imo has a very wacky sort of opening. Um, most often you will just train another warrior and move towards the uh, resource of your choice. Preferably one that you can also upgrade your capital with. In this case we can't but we see a pepper. And that pepper is going to be the one choice that we have. So move on to the resources that you can find and then take, uh, in this case, hunting. In some cases you can take organization, whatever floats through a boat. And then from there, after uh, the second village has been captured, you want to consider getting either philosophy or just not getting philosophy. And that's really up to you, uh, depending on the map type. For maps like 256 Continents, I really enjoy taking Philosophy. But if you're up against multiple opponents, it's usually not worth it. Katali can be played as just another non-turn zero tribe. What you usually do is move your defender towards a resource. Just like almost every tribe. And then train a warrior. Then move your defender onto a resource. Oops, we didn't find a village. That is unfortunate. And then move your warrior somewhere else. So what do you do in case you don't find a village immediately? This applies to many non-turn zero tribes. And what we are going to do is just pass the turn. Stay calm. And regret your life choices. This is why you don't play Quetzali. Yadak! Yadak is one of my favorite tribes to play. Uh, although they have been nerfed quite substantially, we're going to use the same old opening that we used to use. Um, this is a very hard uh, example to give here. But what we want to do is just a road towards a resource. We see a village, luckily, and then train another warrior. What we can now do is just road all over the place. We got quite unlucky with this one. And then from there we can either uh, upgrade the cities over here, or uh, in case you do get lucky, you can uh, use the triple road strategy to upgrade your capital. And after that you can take organization, which usually levels up your cities. Take a look at the opening strategy for Aquarium. Aquarium is incredibly hard to play and opening moves can be quite difficult. So what you want to do is either move on the coastline towards a resource that you see. And in this case we don't see any resource. We can even funny uh, example we could try to hit this warrior over here but that wouldn't do anything for us so we just take a gamble and we get unlucky 
in this case we are on the shoreline and we see quite a lot of resources going on over here and what we are going to try and do is we are just going to train another amphibian this is very aggressive but it is usually the right play because we see a fruit over here and a fruit over here we can probably upgrade our cities with organization time for my all-time favorite tribe which is Illyrion now Illyrion can really make use of their polytars and sometimes it is wise to go with the polytar push and in some cases it really isn't in this case it is a hard choice we don't see any animals whatsoever we only see a ruin over here but what we are probably just going to do if we want to go with an economic strategy which is my preference uh, which has really fallen out of favor we are going to do this now if we were to have any indicators of a village then it would probably be better to push with an animal or if you're very close to your opponent you can usually overwhelm them in a couple of turns with some animals but in this case we really can't so oh that's not what I wanted to show but yeah this game is just really unlucky and Might be able to uh, to aggro. See, this push wouldn't have led anywhere. There is probably a village over here, though. Now, this is the to most people hardest opener of them all, which is Polaris. Now, Polaris, of course, I get it, is a weird and wacky tribe. But if you want to play them like I do which is usually not the best choice you can train another Mooney this is only good if you're playing on Archipelago or Waterworld in this case we are playing Continents and we spawn next to a lighthouse so what we are going to do is just like Quetzali we're going to just pass the turn get organization and harvest that fruit since we can also upgrade this village over here from there we can either try to go with another Mooney or just try to go with another warrior because you need to expand room. now for the final opener of this video that is going to be Simanti this is a very weird spawn but I like it so if you want to play Simanti correctly this is what you're going to do we're going to move off this village usually you'll spawn in a quarter of course we're going to harvest the fungi on the first turn then what you do is you'll get a free upgrade after that get a workshop then you get a warrior and that warrior is going to get boosted since there is spores to this side to this side and there is resource indicators all over the place we are just going to pick one of them the anyone that we like and we are going to move our shaman usually uh, you spawn in the corner of course so we're going to put this guy in a safe place to uh, go from you can also choose to train another uh, warrior but I like to go with this kind of spawn and tactics so that is it for today I hope you all enjoyed and I hope you learned something from this weird and wacky strategy game um, and the tactics that I explained to you so if you learned something from this video make sure to hit the like and subscribe button as it really helps me out I hope you'll enjoy it and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!